Welcome back to another wonderful episode of the Grateful Together podcast. I am your host, Jasmine Chanel, and I'm so glad that you tuned in today. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you who have been following the podcast, who've been sharing, who's been liking, and most importantly, the ones who have been listening. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share with someone and also comment um, anything that catches your eye, anything you want to say in regards to this episode. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, today, um, I want to read from 1 Kings 17, 8. And this is about Elijah and the widow. Um, I was sitting here and I decided I was going to get my Bible out and start just reading. I actually was going to read about David because... And today, I have been doing my best to just release control and to continue to trust God in each and every situation. And so, I was going to go to David and look at the part where, um, after he was anointed, the part where um, Samuel was kind of still mourning Saul because he wanted to be king. But without further ado, we're not reading from there. Um, I opened my Bible and I came to 1 Kings 17. And I immediately thought of, I saw this um, passage because the Lord had put this on my heart a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago, honestly. And so um, I just wanted to encourage someone who may be struggling because this also is a sign of release, you know, to just release and remember that God is definitely in control. He is more than capable of filling all your needs. And even though you may feel like you may not have everything you need in the moment, God knows what you need and he supplies it to you. Um, he consistently provides and it may not be the way that we think that he's going to, but in all God's word will never come back void. And whatever he spoke to you, is what will truly come to pass. So without further ado, I just want to go ahead and jump into the text. So starting at 1 Kings 17, 8, um, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, Get up, go to Zarephath that belongs to Sidon, or Sidon and stay there. Look, I have commanded a woman who is a widow to provide for you there. And so if we continue on, Elijah gets up and he goes and does what God tells him to do. He arrives at the city gate and there was a widow gathering wood. And before I continue, I just want to look at a few things because um, I've been in this place where I have just been asking God, like, well, God, what do you want me to do? Or God, what did you tell me to do? Or God, if I'm missing something, let me know. And I remember recording an episode previously and just saying that whenever God speaks, he makes sure that you understand. So I was talking about Noah and the ark. You know, God commanded him. God told him to get up and go build this ark. And he made sure that Noah understood what needed to be done before he ventured out to do it. And also we see it in the same text with Abraham and Isaac. Abraham was instructed to go sacrifice Isaac on the mountain And God made sure that he understood that so that he knew when he got there what to do. And so I found myself recently in a place where I'm just like, okay, Lord, am I hearing you correctly? Did I not hear you fully? Am I not understanding? And also, there's been a place where I haven't, you know, fully, you know, I haven't fully been understanding God. And I've been just asking, like, well, God, you know. I know I said this, or I know we talked about this, but can you reiterate what it is that you're saying? So I just said all that to say, don't be afraid to make sure that you're hearing God correctly. You know, don't agree to what God is saying and not fully understand what he's telling you. Sometimes it is just get up, you know, sometimes like yesterday, for instance, I was in my room sleeping. I was so tired and the Lord, you know, woke me up so I can get up and get in his presence and at first, I was just like, well, Lord, you want me to get up and do what? Like, what do you want me to do? I said my prayer. I'm in bed. I'm going to bed. And I was like, oh, okay. So I got up. I came up here in my living room. And I 
I sat, I watched TV, kind of scrolled on my phone for a little bit. And then I realized, I was like, okay, well, let me just spend some time in your presence. And after I got done doing that, I started talking for maybe about an hour and a half or so. And I said, well, Lord, you know, I'm going to go ahead and go to bed now because <laughs> I'm tired. And so sometimes you may not really understand what it is that God is telling you to do. But if you just be obedient and get up or and go and do what he says, he will, you know, lead you down where you're supposed to be. He will direct your path. And so I just wanted you to be encouraged that it's okay to not fully understand because God doesn't give us every detail. Sometimes it will be just one thing or two things, or sometimes, you know, he'll give it to us plain, but, um, sometimes it's just that one thing. And so even in this, you know, he told Elijah to go and he told him to look, that's what I wanted to highlight it, to look. He says, look, I have commanded a woman who is a widow to provide for you there. And so when he got there, he saw a lady, um, a widow gathering wood. So obviously, you know, he was looking for what God had told him he had set aside for him, which was the widow. Um, and she was there the same way with, um, who was it? Isaac, I think when he went to go find, um, Rebecca for Isaac. And, you know, he told his, his servant, the servant that, you know, I'm going to, there's going to be a woman there who will be gathering water, you know, and let her, um, let her not only give me water, but let her feed me, like let her feed the camels. Like, and you have to look for the very things that, you know, we're praying for. Sometimes you have to look for God's instruction and make sure that the answer to your prayer is what is in front of you. And so I thought that was really good because it says, look, I have commanded. So that lets you know that God had already set aside the the resources for him to be able to do what it is that God had told him to do. And so I wanted to just encourage you because I also felt encouraged in that moment because I've said it plenty of times, God has called me to this new place. And sometimes, not sometimes, let's be real, all the time, I'm here struggling because I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, are we doing something new today? Or, you know, what, what what's going on, you know? And God has been reiterating to me that he's, you know, just continue to stand tall in your faith. Continue to know that I am with you each and every way. And I will provide what you need as you need it. Your daily manna. And let's be real. Sometimes that's really hard because as for me, it's just like, okay, I see all of these things and all of these, you know, things that need to be done. And I don't currently have the resources to do them. And God says, but I do, you know. I have abundance that I could give you. I could give you a bunch of things up front to handle everything at once. But then you would think that in your shift, you did that. So I have to take you through this stretching to show you that I am in control and everything that you need will be taken care of. And so I thought that was really good. And so continuing on, um, he gets there. He sees the widow gathering wood, jump down in 10 Um, continuing the 10 it says please bring me a little water in a cup and let me drink as she went to get it he called to her and said please bring me a piece of bread in your hand but she said as the lord your god lives i don't have anything baked only a handful of flour in the jar and a bit of oil in the jug just now i am gathering a couple of sticks in order to to go prepare it for myself and my son, so we can eat it and die. And so basically what she's saying here is we don't have any enough food to survive. You know, I'm gathering and preparing these sticks so that I can prepare our last meal or what she thinks is her last meal. And what I thought was so profound in this was not only did God set aside provision for Elijah in this moment, But he also set aside provision for the widow and her son because you have to think that just as well as she's providing for him, Elijah was there to to, for her to be blessed. Right. So she's blessed because she was there to bless him. And so in the midst of that, they both are provided for or all three of them, the son, the widow and Elijah, because she was there to take care of him while he was there and Elijah brought abundance to her because she was doing him a favor, you know, or doing God a favor, really. Um, God commanded her to, you know, help. And so 
And that it's a blessing because, you know, you go sometimes and not knowing how who you're going to meet along the way. And the people that are in your life have a great impact. And you have to remember and just be thankful and grateful for each and every person who God allows or sends to help you in, in any kind of way, no matter what that looks like. And I am just super grateful for the, the people that I have had in my circle to show up and help me, even if it's just saying a prayer for me, even if it's just encouraging me, sending me money or, you know, giving me food or whatever it has been. And vice versa, you know, also try to show up for them in the ways that you can possible. But it's a blessing because you see that God not only looks out for Elijah, but he also looks out for the widow and her son. Because in this moment, she doesn't have food to consistently eat. So she's saying, I'm going to go prepare what I'm assuming is going to be our last meal because I don't have the resources. I don't have the food that we need in order to survive. And you have to know that she's already going through a lot because she's lost her husband. She's a widow, right? And so you're here with this son and you you don't know how to figure it out. You don't know where your next meal is going to come from. You don't know how things are going to work out. So she's assuming that she's just going to die. But God shows up in the midst of her doubting. God shows up in the midst of her worrying. And he blesses her with Elijah. And Elijah tells her to do these things, you know. And as long as she's obedient to doing those things, um, she would consistently be blessed. And I think that's just so profound because it not only speaks to where I'm at, because it just reminds me that obedience has its rewards. There's a miracle on the other side of your obedience. Like, I know that it may be hard. And you guys got to forgive me because this this is so dear to my heart. Like, what? And I, I promised myself I wasn't going to get emotional, but it is what it is, you know? Um. So, have grace um, as I try to get through this. But it's so profound because in the moments where you're left to think that you have to figure it out, God is just calling you to just trust that he has already figured it out. To trust that you can trust in him even when you can't trust in man. Even when people have failed you or disappointed you along your life. God is a good God and he has your best interest at heart. So here is this lady with her son thinking that they're about to eat their last meal because they're going to die. Because they don't have what it is that they need to survive. And God shows up. God shows up at the right time to make sure that she has plenty. And so I thought this was so good because it's just like, not only did you provide provision for Elijah, but you provided provision for this widow and her son, somebody who felt like she's losing it all. You've lost your husband. Now you're going to lose not only your life, but your son's life. You may potentially lose everything that you own. You, she just doesn't know because she's looking at her jar that has a handful of flour and a little bit of oil. And she's going to prepare a little bit of sticks to, to make this last meal. And God shows up and says, no, you have everything you need because you have me. And I thought that was so good because I said a couple of weeks ago, the Lord reminded me of this very same scripture that even though you feel like you have nothing, you have everything you need because I am the one who provides the way for you. I am the per person who sends your provision. I am the one who has control over it, not you. And so I need you to sit and I need you to be still and I need you to trust that I have your best interest at heart. Even when you feel like you're losing it all, even when you see that you've lost people, you've lost friends, you've lost family members because I separated you because you are going on this new journey that I'm calling you to. You've quit your job. But I want you to know that I am in control. And I thought this is so good, you guys, because let me tell you, it has been it has been a time, okay? And I was just sitting here thinking because I was like, it's so crazy because we look at stuff and we we perceive things to be one way and when it actually happens, you realize that it's not even going the way that you even like this journey for me is not going nowhere near the way I thought it was gonna go. But that's because I'm not in control. And it's crazy because I was thinking when I first left my job, I was like, I remember saying like, oh, you know, Bank of America is going to be my last resort. But I just didn't figure it would be this way. I thought I would have a plan. I thought I would have more figured out. And God said, but that's because you were doing it in your strengths. 
I had to show up and show you that you are not in control as much as you think you have been this whole time. Whole time I've been in control. And so we have to change our mindset to know that we don't have control. It's just an illusion. We're not in control of anything. Nothing happens by chance. Nothing happens because of us. It happens because of God. And so um, that's what we see here. We see that this lady is, her hands are all tied up. She does, she has exhausted all her options. She doesn't have any options. But at least that's what she thinks. And in the midst of her having no option, God shows up as her only option. And he saves her, not only from losing herself, but just he gives her life because he gives her abundance in him. And so if we drop down um, after she says, you know, we're going to eat it and die and verse and die in verse 13, she says, then Elijah says to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a small loaf from it and bring it out to me. Afterward, you may make some for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says. The flour jar will not become empty and the oil jug will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. So she proceeded to do according to the word of Elijah. Then the woman the woman, Elijah, and her household ate for many days. The flour jar did not become empty and the oil jug did not run dry. According to the word of the Lord, he has spoken through Elijah. Ah, uh, like that itself is just like here this lady is thinking that she's about to perish because she's lost her husband. She doesn't have whatever you know, was once had. She doesn't have the food to survive. And God shows up in the midst of her thinking that it's about to go badly. God shows up in the right moment at the right time to remind her that she's, you know, he didn't forget about her. And he gave her a promise and he kept that promise because it says that God said that the flour jar and the oil jug would never run dry until the rain hits the surface of the land and her household ate for many days. It is so crazy. And why I like when I, I when I opened my Bible and I was at this page, I literally started crying because I had sat here and I had just said, I said, Lord, because like I said, God had places on my heart a couple weeks ago, you know, um, and I sat here today and I said, regardless of what I don't have, I said, I am grateful because me and my son have not missed a meal. We have not, you know, yes, I haven't had the resources to do the things that we used to do or to go and, you know, do what we I'm used to doing with, you know, a steady income. But I said, for the most part, I'm like, we have not gone without food. We have not gone without water. And even when our food runs low, let me tell you something, God shows up. And he sends somebody to bless us. And I find a way to make it stretch. I find a way to make it work. And I am just so grateful because for one, like I said in this, he sends Elijah and he says that he commanded a widow to look after him. And just as well as he commanded the widow, he commanded Elijah to look after her. Because if you look down, if you start off in 17, the widow's son dies and Elijah cries out to God to revive him and break him back to life. And that's why I say, like, it's so important to know the context of this because here's a woman who thought she was going to lose it all. And then it's just like, what What do you do when you at one point thought you were going to die and then you turn around later and your son actually dies? He, The breath from his life um, or from his body stops. Because it says, um, let me see where it says, right here, 17. After this, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. His illness got worse until he stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, man of God, what do you have against me? Have you come to call attention to my inequity so that my son is put to death? And so just to read on, Elijah tells her to give him 
her son and he takes him to the upper room and he prays over him. He cries out to the Lord and the Lord hears Elijah. And I think that's important too. So it says in 22, um, or let's start at 20 at 20. Um, so like I said, he took him from her arms and then he took him upstairs in the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow? I am staying with by killing her son. Then he stretched himself out over her, over the boy three times. He cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, my God, please let this boy life come into him again. And this part right here in verse 22 is so profound because it lets you know that God hears our prayers. He may not answer immediately because it said he stretched out over this boy three times and prayed over this boy three times. And sometimes it takes longer than three times. Sometimes we're praying for things and we're waiting for things for years and months and weeks and hours and days. But you got to know that each and every prayer that you send up, God hears it. And even if he hasn't answered you yet, please know that there is an answer coming. God is, he already has a provision in need for that prayer. The answer is on its way and you got to just trust him that it will get to you in the right moment. Not only did Elijah show up to this lady's house to give her provision for food, but she he showed up there in the nick of time to save this boy's life from dying, to save her son. Because he had favor with God and God loved him, he was able to intercede on her behalf to bring her son back to life. And that's what we see here in 22. So in 22, it says, So the Lord listened to Elijah, and the boy's life came into him again. And he lived. Then Elijah took the boy, brought him down from the upper stairs room into the house and gave him to his mother. Elijah said, look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, now I know you are a man of God and the Lord's word from your mouth is true. So we see a bunch of things here. Like for one, let's look at again the word look. Sometimes you gotta see it to believe it, but you gotta know that faith is not by what we see. Faith is by what God spoke, what God says. And you gotta know that if God was willing enough to give her food for plenty of days, she that he would definitely, you know, watch after her son. Because of the favor that she gave and the provision that she helped Elijah with. And not only did I, like, it's it's so profound because it says the Lord listened to Elijah. He listened to Elijah's prayer on behalf of her son. Like, what does that tell you? That means that when we are praying, when we're in praying, and we're not only just praying for ourselves, we're interceding for others. God hears us. And we may not see the fruit or the harvest of that prayer right then and there, but you never know how God is working on somebody else because of your prayer. So whoever you're praying for and whatever you're praying for, please continue to keep searching. Keep, please continue to keep interceding and standing and praying for that person, praying for yourself, praying for that miracle and believe it. Believe that God will send the answer at the right time. And not only did God... Like you, you see, this is so profound. It's it's a very short story. It's um verse eight through twenty four is the is Elijah is a widow. So in the beginning, you see that she's already proclaimed that her and her son is gonna die because they don't have food. Then we drop down to seventeen. You see that okay, they have food now, but the son's dead. But the son was brought back to life and. From the text, I'm not even gonna sit here and say from what I believe. From what the text says, this was done so that this lady could become a believer. And the reason I say that is because in 24 it says, Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know you are a man of God, and the Lord's word from your mouth is true. That lets you know that she's a believer. Because maybe in the beginning she didn't believe enough that this was a man sent from God or what God's words were were uh, sorry what words were said were from God and they were true because if you see she asked her you know man of God what do you have against me have you come to attention 
to my inequity so that my son is put to death. So she's questioning, like, okay, God, what, like, what's up? Like, you know, what's going on? Like, have I been that bad that you, you know, I'm a widow and now, you know, we got food and water and oil, but now my son is there. Like, what is this? So I'm going to live. My son's going to die. Are you punishing me for my inequities? You punishing me for my flaws? You punishing me? And sometimes when we're in the midst of thinking that we're losing it all, we have that mentality where it's just like, okay, God, are you punishing me for something I did? Or, you know, is shame, am I so ashamed or do I, should I be so ashamed that I'm losing everything and now this is happening? And because when one thing's happened, it's like sometimes a bunch of other things happen. What's to say, if it's not one thing, it's it's another. But you got to know that even in the midst of that, God shows up and he will turn it around for you at the right time. You may have to lose some things in the midst of it because the promise comes with a sacrifice. It comes with just losing your control, losing the perspective that you used to have. You got to come up higher and see what God is doing. And even if it costs you something to get rid of some old stuff, like I told you guys, when I moved into this new apartment, I I threw away a lot of stuff and I'm still throwing away stuff to this day. I've thrown away and given away a lot of things and I had to replace some things, but I don't have um, a lot of things that I used to. And like I said, regardless of what we don't have, me and my son has been able to eat and drink and we've got lights and we've got entertainment. We got Wi-Fi, you know, so we have outside. We're going to go outside. You know, I may not always have gas in my car or I may not be able to always go out and do what I want to do. But the very necessities that I need God provides and then when I have extra to do extra I do extra you know I go out and I have fun I spend time with my son but at this point I have to realize that you know you have to do what you can do until the the full abundance comes until God gives you more you do the best with what you can have what you have and so I just wanted to encourage you that whatever you have is enough because God is enough God will provide you more when the when the time for more has come. And lastly, I just want to finish with um, a, a story about myself um, and how this even came about. And like I said, I was already emotional and crying before I recorded this. So I was like, you know, I cried all my tears. But obviously, you know, this is very sentimental and dear to my heart. And I just knew because sometimes we feel like, okay, I'm going through this by myself, but I know that I'm not the only one that's going through some things. I know that I'm not the only one who just sometimes feel like I'm losing it all, you know, whether that's losing my mind. Sometimes I sit in here and I'm just like, Lord, I got to get out of this house because I'm tired of hearing my child screaming and yelling all day or playing all out with his stuff. Like, I just want peace and quiet and, you know, the dog barking every now and then. You know, sometimes you just you just want to be able to hear yourself think. And sometimes it gets hard because you're in these chaotic places, but you don't really have control over, you know, what another person does. You know, my toddler, he's three, so he he don't know how to stay in his own room. And he want to watch TV and play in the living room. And I'm like, no, go in your room. And then I'm trying to do homework and I'm trying to record and all these things. But you have to know that God will pro a vibe and it's going to get better and just remember that whatever you lost or whatever you're losing God will give you double like God will bring you back something better and even if you may be just like this widow and you may feel like you're losing it all but God is actually gonna let you keep it have you ever been in a point where you feel like okay I don't know how this gonna happen and God shows up and the very thing you thought when you were losing God let you keep and he gave you more. So you have to trust him. And it's right me to the story I was going to tell. Because I was sitting here and I, I thought about. Um, when I thought about this story. Uh, when he gave it to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, I thought about something that happened to me. A long time ago y'all. Um, and it was. I'll tell you what happened. So I had recently graduated from high school this is my first apartment and I end up I was supposed to originally move in by myself but some way somehow I don't know to this day I still question like how did this happen I don't even know I can't even tell you I don't remember I couldn't even tell you in that moment how we ended up like moving in together but I ended up moving with one of my my high school boyfriends and you know it was both of our first place 
Um, and for me, it was a, it wasn't like a choice. I didn't have anywhere to go. So I was forced to get out on my own and I had been out for a little while, but just kind of like going from here to there because I had just lost my dad and things weren't going good at home. And I was just all around and I was like, you know, what? I'm going to save up and get my own place. And so, like I said, I don't really know how it turned into us getting our, our first place together, but long story short, uh, we ended up moving in together, and then it kind of took a, a left turn, and so he ended up moving out, and I still stayed in the apartment. And so there were some things that were left at his house, or uh, at the house, and obviously, like I said, I still was staying there, because I'm like, I'm not leaving, you leave, you know. And so he ended up moving out back to his parents' house, and there were still some things that was left, like a TV that was left or whatever. And so I remember, like, this man called me about the TV. And so we we're going back and forth about this TV. And then when I got, I was on my way to work. And as I got, I think I was just so tired. Like I wanted this man to hurt the way I was hurting. I wanted this man to feel the pain that I was feeling because of everything that had happened. Like it, it was a bad situation. And my close friends that know me know what situation this is. Like, what? Like, I just thank God that I'm not that person anymore. I thank God that I don't, had lived that life, you know, now I need to go back there, you know, but I don't, I'm just glad that I don't allow those kind of tactics to get me upset and get me out of character anymore. That's all I'll say. But it was, it, it was a bad situation. It got, it, it got really bad. And so, uh, it just felt like a never ending cycle. Like it was just like the minute you thought, okay, I'm done with this person here. This person come back, talk about this and talk about that. Like just doing anything to, just get me out of character and I was in return doing the same thing because I'm like okay I'm I'm so tired of this like I wanted to just be done da, da, da. and so long story short there was a tv that was left at the apartment it was his tv but it was like one of the big floor model tv so I'm like I'm not putting that down the stairs like if you want it you're gonna come and get it and so he's like oh I don't know. we're going back and forth back and forth and so I got to work and I was just so over it I was just like lord I went, I will never forget this day. Like, I will never forget this day. And this is what I was sitting here saying to the Lord. I said, Lord, I will never forget how you showed up for me in that day. And you reminded me that even though I felt like I was losing it all, you still deemed me as a winner. You still reminded me that I still was a winner. Even though this person was throwing dirt on my name, this person was lying, this person, you know, tried to, like, get me arrested. Like, lie, like it was just bad, you guys. Like, regardless of what was going on, God still deemed me as a winner. And so um, the reason I say that is because I went in the inside and I started, like, I just, I remember just busting out crying, like, at work, clocked in, I bust out crying, so I'm going in the bathroom, and I just start praying. And I said, Lord, I don't even care about this TV. You know I don't care about this TV. I'm like, but here I am playing tit for tat with him because I want him to, to hurt the same way I'm hurting. Like, I want him to feel the same way I feel. And I said, but Lord, you know what? I release it. I give you control. It's not about a TV because I don't really care about a TV. I don't care. I don't want any ties with him. I don't want anything from him. I just want it to be done. You know, I, you know, just repent. And I, I turn away and I should have moved in with him in the first place. And I said, you know, I kind of run this on myself. I said, but I'm glad that. You know, this is the way out. And I say, you know, whatever your will is, Lord, whatever you tell me to do, regardless, I will do it. You know, if you tell me to take that TV downstairs, I'll, I'll push it downstairs. Like, whatever you want me to do, because that's the only way it's going to get downstairs. That was a big TV, and we we stayed on the second floor. So there was no way I was going to be able to, you know, get that down. And I think when he brought it in, his dad had helped him and somebody else. But I was like, I'm not moving that. And so... I said, but Lord, if you tell me to move it, I will move it. And however it looks, the way when it gets down the stairs, that ain't got nothing to do with me. And so at that moment, I just surrendered and I gave up all control and I just let it go. And I stopped doing the back and forth because he was still texting and calling and going, you know, crazy. And um, so in that moment, I just said, Lord, you're in control and I'm not going to argue with him. It is what it is. Whatever you lead me to do, whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do. And so I remember just saying, amen, like wiping my face. My face is so public. Like, you guys, I had been crying. for. I was just, I wasn't crying that long, but the way I was, I was crying hard. Like, it was one of those hard cries where it was just like, I'm tired. Like, this person is literally draining the life out of me, just trying to be relevant and trying to just make my life a living hell. Like, 
it was just hard. And so I remember getting myself together, getting myself ready to start because my I was just getting to work. So I still had to work through all of this and I wasn't really feeling it. But I said, you know what, I'm going to walk in with my head on my shoulders and I'm going to get through this day. And then I'm going to go home and I'm going to sleep it all away. And so I remember that day we were having some kind of like contest at work. And so we had all got like raffle t- tickets and they were auctioning off like um, a bunch of nice items or whatever. And I remember um, there was this 32 inch TV. And this is like when 32 inch TVs were like hot. Like they didn't have like the big TVs like they have now. Uh, like I said, this was like when I first graduated out of, co- uh, out of high school. So this was like years ago. And so, you know, flat screen TVs was like coming up and they didn't have all the 50 inches yet or whatever. But so, you know, a flat screen TV was a flat screen TV. So it was a third. And I still have this TV to my till this day. And I was like, that's just the favor of God, because I've had other TVs that have come out. Like I had I bought a Vizio, a 50 inch Vizio and my son broke it. And now the the 32 inch that I uh or let me get into that before I sell that. But so, yeah, we ended up doing this raffle ticket. And so I remember just sitting there. I was like, I wasn't expecting to win anything because I never win anything. OK, when it comes to the people that's like, oh, I always win stuff. I'm like, no, when it comes to contests or just randomly winning something, I never I never win anything. Like when I say anything, it don't matter how many tickets I buy or how many times I play. I'm not a winner when it comes to like contests and stuff. Right. And so they get to the TV or whatever, and everybody's like, oh, I hope I get it. I hope I get it. I hope I get it. And so I'm just sitting there like, whatever, you know, I'm just here. And so they call the ticket out, and I look at my ticket, and it's my ticket. Like, I remember just sitting there, and my homegirl was like, what's the ticket? Like, what's your ticket? And she's like, girl, that's you. That's your ticket. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, I want the TV. And so I remember going up, like, people was mad, y'all. They was mad because they wanted the TV. But I was like, "Uh uh-uh. And so one girl was like, can I buy it from you? I said, girl, no. I was like, and for me, it wasn't really about the TV. It was about, like I said, in the moment, I felt like I was losing it all. Because this, like I said, this person was trying to, um, sorry, something on my face. But this person was literally trying to tear my, my life apart, okay? Um trying to like take like it was just bad i'm not even gonna get into all that it just know that it was bad okay it was bad and i felt like i was losing everything i felt like i was losing my mind i felt like i was gonna lose my place because i really couldn't afford that apartment by myself that's why we got it together but by the grace of god i ended up staying at the apartment by myself this person tried to like get me off the lease and i was like you can't do that like we're on the lease together if you want to get taken off that's in your business but i'm still gonna be over here like i'm staying here i'm paying the rent here by myself and then my friend ended up moving in a couple months later so by the grace of god i was still able to keep my place and i got a tv and i ended up uh i think he ended up no, he never even came and got the TV. That's the crazy thing. It's like he didn't even want the TV. He just wanted to make my life a living hell. And so I ended up throwing the TV away because I, I didn't want to take it with me to my new apartment. And I had this new TV. But in that moment, like I said, I was reminded of this widow because you feel like, dang, you finna lose everything. And now you're finna die. I felt like dying. Like, and I can say that, you know, I really did. Like I said, even my close friends that know that that time for me, I remember just, um, and also just after like that moment, it didn't stop there. And I remember just going to church service one night with my friend and just literally like going to the altar, just crying out and just crying. Cause I was just like, it's just one thing after another, like you just never would have expected it to be this bad. And nobody really knew the depth of it. To this day, nobody really knows. The, well, like, one or two people does. But it was bad, y'all. It was really bad. But in that moment when I went at TV, God reminded me that even though you feel like you're losing everything, I'm still with you. And you are a winner. I have deemed you a winner. Even though, you know, everything is trying to come up against you, you are a winner. And it was so profound. Like I said, I broke down crying today because I was just like, even though I don't have everything that... I used to have, even though I no longer have this corporate job that was, I felt like the best thing and everything. I still have God and God is the victor 
And so because I follow God, I'm a victor. Like I win because he's already overcome and he's already won. And so, yes, my life doesn't look the way it used to look, but that's just because God is in control now. I'm no longer in control and I do what I can with what God gives me. And even when I feel like I'm losing it all, I have to remember that I'm not a loser. I'm a winner because I'm a daughter of a king. I'm a daughter of a God who loves me and his love is so unconditional. And like I said, it's not about the TV. Like I said, to this day, I still have that TV. And that was in, what, 2012, 20, 20, yeah, 2011, 2012. And I still have it to this day. Like I said, there's been, I've had other TVs that have cut down or just broke. And that TV is still standing strong. It's in my son's room. And I told him, if you break this TV, I'm going to break your butt. Because he broke my Vizio TV, my 50 inch. And I had to get another one. But I still have that TV. And it works just, and, and oh, let me tell y'all, I dropped it the other day and I thought the screen had cracked because it literally felt like on the side, you know, sometimes when you drop like the flat screen TVs, they like the screen cracks in the inside. So it literally dropped, I'm talking about like off of the table, like it dropped off the dresser. And so I thought it was literally done for, but nope, it still worked to this day. Working like it never even fell. You can't even tell it fell. And so that's just it's a reminder that that's how God is. Like even when we fall, we get up and we brush it off and we keep moving because we are connected to the source. We have more than what it looks like. Even though that lady only had a little handful of flour and oil, that was all she needed to get the abundance that God had for her. And even when she thought she was going to lose her son, God gave her her son back. And not only did she get her son back, but she she got her belief back. She was now a believer of the words that God spoke to her because maybe she stopped believing because her, her husband died. Maybe she was believing for her husband not to be died or killed or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't talk about her husband. But, you know, it's just... You just never know, but you got to know that God loves you and he's not going to leave you nor forsake you. And so I thought this is so profound because like I said, I sat here and I said, wow, I said when I was deemed a loser, feeling like I was losing it all, God, you deemed me a winner. And it doesn't matter what people say about you. It matters what God says about you. So ask yourself, what is God saying about me? Who does God say I am? Whose am I? And when you know that, you will be able to overcome this world. You will continue to walk with your head held high. Even if you lose it all, you've gained it all because you are a daughter and a son of God. So I just wanted to encourage you because that really encouraged me today. Like I said, it had me in tears because I'm just like, regardless of what I don't have, I'll tell you what I do have. I have my faith, even if it's little faith, which I, I know I'm... Working on consistently increasing my faith, but I have some type of faith. I believe that God is my provider, and he's been proof of that for this whole joy ride. Like I told you guys, I don't have a big plan. I don't have a plan. God is my plan. I don't have provision and piles of money or anything sitting on the sidelines. God has been my provider, and he has been providing for me, and I trust that he is consistently telling the truth. And I want you to believe God for whatever he's told you about your life. And do what he says, do whatever he's telling you to go because there's provision on the other other side of going. Look at what he's telling you and obey. So I hope this encourages you because it definitely blessed my heart, okay? And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Remember to remain grateful because it makes you gorgeous. I love you, but most importantly, God loves you. I will talk to you guys on the next episode. Bye.